13 radiologists, which means you have, for every one radiologist, you have one million people. Mm -hmm. So how, in, in the event that you can imagine the volume of imagery they have to deal with, without access to digital solutions that make it easy for them to be able to see through all that volume and figure out what is the most critical mm -hmm. one to follow up mm -hmm. on, because criticality in this case is only going to be based on who is in a critical condition, versus could there be someone in this whole pipeline or backlog that I have that if I take care of them right now, I prevent a crisis in the future. And, and this is really where I feel, even as a country, we're trying to put in more effort to say, in the absence of having enough, enough healthcare practitioners, how do we then use digital technologies to support their intervention so that at least we're able to deliver that quality healthcare um, to, to our citizens? The take home is that this is the way forward for health services around the world, not only in Africa, but also in Africa. We need to use the technology and the data and artificial intelligence means we now have in our hands. We need to use that to transform our health systems that we can make them true health systems because now they are really care systems that wait for people to get sick and then take care of them. We have to transform them to become proactive predictive and ultimately preventive so that they can keep the populations healthy. There is no doubt that the, the future, the next five years will be exactly as we've seen the fintech, we will see health tech. You see that uptake, we went all the way to 21-25%. Uh, if you look at that, it basically means what? Today, uh, uh, the medical doctors are very comfortable today in actually diagnosing patients at the remote location using a different apps. If you see what happened to the banking sector, what the telecom or the mobile technology has done to the banking sector, it will happen also in the medical sector. If I can consult my bank account, I can do all my transactions while sitting in my, in my office or sitting on, on the couch at my home, why I cannot consult my doctor on the application also? Same thing. The same thing will happen. So you really can see the next five years to come, it will be the time for the health tech application and for our entrepreneur also to prosper. If you look at the Sustainable Development Goal, good health is one of the SDGs that has been defined by the United Nations. With the pandemic, we have lived a situation that has demonstrated that uh, health is a part of our daily life. Having access to digital health is even more important to ease the way that we are living our life. Therefore, the idea of this report is to put in place all the foundational layers that will bring all the stakeholders together in order to provide good health to the citizen, if I can summarize it so simply. But of course, there are some concerns with regard to government, concerns regarding financing and funding the system, concerns about the benefits for the citizen. How can we ensure that the population will be convinced that digital health is something that will be meaningful for them? If we want to talk about scale, it also means even amongst the teams in the startups that are creating solutions, you need to have diversity. Diversity in terms of, you know, you want a solution that is working in Rwanda to also work in Cameroon. How do you understand context better so that when you scale to another part of the continent, you know that it will be a right fit for what you're looking for. But you also want diversity from a gender perspective. I always use the example, and I think we all know it when, when we talk about the seat belt or AC. Thankfully, we don't have AC here. It's, it's very good. But the example that is, that, that is provided around seat belts and AC is that largely, when you look at how the seat belt was designed, it was designed mostly for, for male. And actually, when accidents happen, it's true. Look at the statistics. When accidents happen, the people that get the most damage are female because of the way it's been designed. It hasn't taken into consideration the different context. Now, I like to talk about AI because AI has its own biases. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that diversity in the team mm -hmm. to ensure that those biases do not come out from the way the solutions are designed, mm -hmm. then the divide that we're talking about, the lack of context, mm -hmm. is always going to be there and that will also uh, you know, prevent the scalability that we're all looking for. 
I see that the Health Tech Hub in Africa here in Kigali is going to be the trendsetter for innovation in the field of health tech because it is the first accelerator hub like this in Africa and also in other continents it doesn't necessarily exist as it is because the beauty of the health tech hub here in Kigali is that our entrepreneurs have already a path forward to partner with the local health system with the public health system here in Rwanda to test their solution and scale it up and when that works they can easily go to other countries and scale their solution there. For us as WHO, it's a, it's a very critical report because WHO, as you know, uh, for years now has been working in the area of uh, digital health. Uh, and um, right from our um, uh, topest level, we have uh, received guidance. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, resolutions uh, that have been defined on moving digital health forward. So, and we have uh, a global health strategy on uh, digital health. In this report, uh, in the analysis that was done, dovetail very well into the uh, work that WHO is already doing into the global uh, report, because the global strategy defines how um, WHO will support countries to adapt digital health. So, as people who are in the health tech sector, uh, this report means a lot to us because uh, it emphasizes on the pillars that uh, the health tech is built on and as we've probably realized uh, in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, healthcare needs there are some changes that need to come uh, in the health tech space because the systems we're using uh, were challenged during the pandemic, so new solutions need to come for us to adapt to the changes and also find new solutions that goes with the type of challenges we have now.